G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. I'm out in the Hunter Valley today with Jared from J&J Rural Contracting. I'm having a look at his little Thor TH40 post driver that he's got mounted on his Kubota tractor. I'm interested in the workflow of putting up a fence line made of hardwood posts that aren't all exactly straight in particularly sandy soil. Jared, how are you, mate? Good, Tim. How are you going? Mate, fantastic. I can't wait to see how you guys accomplish this task, how you work, and how the little Thor hammer works on your tractor, mate. <laughs> Alright Jared, so tell us about the job today. We've got some pretty fancy looking hardwood posts, but they're not all exactly straight mate. What's your workflow? No, they're not. So, because we, we've got a bit of different size, you know, timber is timber, it's never never perfect. Yep. Uh, we've got to blend that in. So the way we're going to do that is aim small, miss small. We're using our string line here that I'll use to get my marks on the ground. Yep. Uh, we'll lay our posts out so that we know... Now you're laying your posts out first. Yes. For a reason, aren't you? What yeah, are you doing that are. for? We're doing that so that we know when we go to, to do our pilot hole in the ground, we can, we can allow for that slight um, variation in, in the section size and diameter of the timber. So you're eye eyeballing each post because they're not all uniform. No, yeah, that's and right. And you're altering your post hole spacing to suit as yes. you're going along the fence yeah, line. that's right. So I'll get a rough mark yep. so we know where they're going. We can lay our posts out to that. And then as we go to auger them, when we look at one, we notice that it's it's drastically smaller. Yep. Then we can alter that mark to suit the post and get it in the in the right spot. Now that'll take a little bit more time, but aesthetics is one of the key drivers it's of this the, fence line, the isn't main, it? The main thing with this one is is it has to be aesthetically pleasing. So you like to have a nice high string line? I I do. The reason for that is if your string line's too close to the ground, your plumb bob tapers in and out a little bit more. Plumb yep. bobs are more accurate over distance. Uh, yep. it, you do have to take into account a little bit of wind loading and take your time. If it, you know, We've got a slight breeze today, there's a little bit here and there. But if you watch the line as the breeze hits it, you can gauge that it's under 10 mil. This is not so, just a, a fence in a paddock somewhere, this is going to be a post and rail display fence. Yeah. So you're getting this 100% right. Yeah, we're, getting, we're aim, aiming as small as possible to miss as small as possible. Any take up that needs to happen for deviation can then happen in the boards when we put the rails on. Well mate, it's the main event now. We've got to use this little Thor driver. Up to the fun stuff. And you're a bit of a fan of this, aren't you? I do, I love this thing. I can't speak highly enough about it. I will point out you're using a copious amount of water in those holes but it's not required for the driver so much as the sand that you're working in at the moment. You're trying to keep the sand from collapsing back in the hole as you pull it out. That's right, fine. That little bit of moisture just helps to shore up the side wall. Yeah. Which is, a, it's just a, a, a preparatory step for the next stage. And it's a funny thing, people might think that you need a smaller auger in sand but you actually need a bigger one because it doesn't compact very well. That's right, yeah. And that water just helps stick that hole together before you get the post in. But it does help the post suck into the hole as well, doesn't it? It does, yeah, absolutely. So once that water's gone in there and the vibrations with the driver have done their thing, yep. that thing will be as, as solid as anything. So Jared's a big fan of water. Make sure you get on the water, guys. Now, talk us through the process of driving a post with this. You don't have as much a hydraulic adjustment as you do with your standard post driver, do you? No. You don't have that no. mast that you're able to throw around. That's right. So how do you overcome that on the front mounts of the tractor? Because people will be worried about it being front mounted as well. But you reckon it's an advantage, Jared? Yeah, I, it is. For the, for the sort of work that we do, um, we rarely find ourselves in a nice open field. We're often times yeah, so in small, you're tight close, tight spaces, spaces under tree branches. The benefit of this is that I don't have to allow three meters of space above me yep. for the mast to, to go up. Um, plus, plus then the hammer as well. Yeah, um, we can have this in, you know, nosing in through trees without damaging anything around. It'd be perfect it. along creek lines and stuff like it, that it too. Is, yeah. It? Yeah. yeah, as long as you've got good stable ground, um, you know, she can, with all that weight up there, it does get a bit tippy, there's a bit of tummy time going on, but you know, you, you get used to that, put your seatbelt on and uh, <laughs> enjoy and just, the ride. And just grin. Yeah, that's right. So in terms of controlling it left to right, forward and back as you're driving the post, because you've, you've got to chase the post a bit. Yep. We don't have exactly, you know, sort of perfectly straight posts here. So you've got to chase it around a bit. In terms of controlling left, right, forward and aft, how do you do that with only two hydraulic hoses? Well, it's, it comes down mostly to your tyres. 
is, is yeah, what right I eh? find. Yeah. Yep. You'll, you'll get the feel of, of the amount of flex that you have in the sidewall of your tyre. Yep. And once you've done that, um, you can chase this thing around all day. Yeah, the beauty right. of it is I can chase it while I'm driving it. I don't necessarily have to get off, reposition and set up again to continue driving the same post. So you're driving the post from the seat of the tractor, yep. not from behind it. Yeah. And the person on the ground is really just there to guide you and put the post in the hole. Yep, yep. So he, they, the most crucial thing is a good groundsman who can see straight and plumb. Yep. yep. And he's just got to tell me in or out, and I can I can get a pretty good gauge for left or right. Sometimes right. On, a, on a 45 degree angle or a different angle, you might need to have them checking both ways yep. or even two people. Um, but just that one or two steps back, check the line, come back, yeah. sight you in. Yeah, yeah. You can tell me in or out as I'm driving it, and I can drive with the with the wheels forwards or backwards, and turn turn on the steering wheel. Now the other advantage of this too, obviously the Thor was first designed for rock breaking, so you've got a rock breaking tip on this as well. I do. I said, this will break rocks all day, no worries. Oh, this is an impressive little bit of kit, isn't it? Um, it's. There's not much to it, but it seems to do the job all right. You were banging in 240 mil hardwood posts there. It didn't seem too hard. No, not too bad. It would have been nice to have nice straighter posts. They bought yeah. up a little bit in the hole, so that, that definitely made it a bit harder. Yeah, hence the water, copious yeah. amounts of water. Yeah. I suppose it also showed more the limit of the tractor rather than the post driver, because your tractor's a light tractor, and with yes. these post drivers, the tractor sort of becomes part of the post driver, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not like right. the ground mounted ones. Yeah, no, heavier machine, more impact, I guess. Yeah. Now you've had this little guy for about a year. What sort of maintenance have you had to do? Absolutely nothing. Just three three pumps of grease a day. All right. That's it. How good is that? It's probably good also, I noticed you were going backwards and forwards an awful lot. It's probably good that you've got a hydrostatic tractor rather than a geared tractor paired with this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bit of an advantage. Not too much to do all at once. It's just heel and toe. So yep. pack up now, that's the beautiful winning part about this, isn't it? You just drive it onto your trailer behind your car and drive away. Yeah, absolutely. No float fees for the customer no. and no return trips for you. Yeah, that's it. Guys, if you are interested in a driver like this, get on to Thor. They're a good Australian company. Jared, thanks very much for having us out today, mate, and Welcome showing to. us a new piece of kit. Yeah, no worries. And uh, I have a sneaking suspicion we might see you on the channel again soon. Yeah, I hope so. I look forward to it. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Jim. Don't forget, guys, if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Helps heaps. And get on to timthompson.ag if you want even more content. I'll see you next week.